everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. I am filming from Paris. Some of you may not know already, but I am in Paris right now. This is going to be probably posted uh, after I get back. Three months later. Um, and organize everything and then I'll edit and post. But uh, if you're watching this, I'm already home. So I, I am in Paris right now. Uh, we just booked an impromptu trip. Uh, I will post uh, sort of like a vlog. I'm not very good at vlogging, guys, but I'm going to try to piece together some of the footage and then um, post it and edit it for you guys with some information about the trip and what it's like to travel in the, the current state of the world right now uh, and what you need to know if any of you are looking to travel to Paris. Uh, I love Paris. It's one of my favorite places in the world. I have very fond memories of Paris and my husband and I have visited a good handful of times so it was really nice to be back again only this time uh, we visited in the fall winter season which is not typical we usually come in the spring uh, but it was a nice experience overall and so there will be more chatting about that in that video if it's not already posted but i thought this video would be good to focus on some of the items that i did pick up and uh, because i do have to pack and I like to get rid of all of the packaging because I really don't need to keep the packaging. I have bags, I have a lot of ribbon and stuff, and I just don't have room in my suitcase. So I will be uh, putting things away neatly. I thought I'd do the unboxing video now uh, because I'm going to have to open these anyway to show customs. So I might as well just do the unboxing now and then organize everything because I am packing, we are leaving tomorrow. So I thought I'd take you through that process with me and then see what I purchased. I am wearing part of my birthday outfit. I know it looks ridiculous and it's not a very practical piece to wear. Actually, yeah, it is quite comfortable. Um, I guess it is practical. But I thought I'd wear it for this video uh, so you could see and it'll be a lot of fun. Um, one piece, so I, did have a, I do have a few pieces from Van Cleef uh, from Fendi, from Chanel, uh, from Dior, and from Hermes. Uh, I will follow up with an Hermes story, uh, and I think that will be quite some fun to listen to. Um, and uh, let's just get the ball rolling. So the first piece that I have is from Van Cleef, uh, and I'll share a little unboxing snipping of that. So this is a Van Cleef and Arpels unboxing. This is my first ever piece. Um, I tracked this down. I had emailed the boutique uh, before I was gonna come. I emailed the Place Vendome boutique, uh, which is like their mothership store. And they let me know that this piece isn't available, but they are expecting shipment. And if it does come in, then they'll WhatsApp me uh, for sure. I didn't hear for them, but I had e I had phoned another boutique, which is quite new. It's only three and a half months old. So basically this came in like a white shopping bag because I didn't want to walk around. Well, I did. Yeah, I did walk around. I didn't have this delivered to the hotel. So plain white shopping bag, which was uh, quite handy. And then here are the two items. So I had emailed, sorry, I had phoned another boutique uh, just randomly. I didn't realize it was new. And the man who answered, he was very kind, very like, you know, helpful. And he said, I do have one piece and I can put it on hold for you. Um, and he was just absolutely wonderful and great. So uh, special thanks to him that I was able to get this piece because apparently this is on a waiting list in Canada and in the US. So uh, let's get straight into the item because that's probably what you want to know. So comes in a bag. I'm not sure what all this is, but this is the bag. And in here, I have my tax free form, and I'll talk about that. Here is just like a travel pouch for the jewelry, so you can travel with it. And then in here, what is this? Um, I think this is like an authenticity card here, and then um, service certificate. So that's there. What's in here? Uh, I think this is receipt, which is in there. Yikes. And then what else? There's so many little things in here. What is this? What is this? Anybody knows? Oh, um, another pouch? What is this? I didn't even ask. There's just so much going on. 
I think this is like a cleaning cloth. Yeah, this looks like a cleaning cloth. So that's um, helpful. So let's put that in there. Okay, so let's set all that aside. Here's the main item here. Undo the ribbon. I'm so excited. I'm not into designer jewelry, to be honest, like because in our um, culture, like we have really great jewelry, right? So it doesn't really compare, but this piece was something that I really love. And here it is. It is so shiny and sparkly. So I was looking for, this is the five motif bracelet. So let's take this out. And uh, this is how it's been sort of wrapped like so. Let's pull it out of the um, holder here. This is it. And that's what it, oops, sorry, I moved the camera. That's what it looks like. So this is the five motif uh, guilloche bracelet with all that cut work there. It's really shiny and pretty, obviously on both sides. I'm really excited to wear this on like a daily basis. Um, I intend to wear this all the time, which is why the bracelet I felt was a good and not investment as in like monetary investment, but a good purchase because I can enjoy this every time I wear this. Like I'm gonna be looking at this as opposed to say a necklace. A necklace I won't be able to see myself, but other people would, will admire on me. Whereas this, I'm always gonna see on my hand. I intend to wear it on this hand. Um, so I'm really excited for this. They didn't have the earrings, unfortunately, but I think I'm quite happy and thrilled uh, with this on its own. They did have the necklace. Uh, they had a 10 motif necklace to this and apparently they just came out with a 20 motif in just the guilloche and not the um, the guilloche and diamond, which is extremely expensive. So I'm incredibly lucky to have this piece. I really love it and I, I intend to enjoy it for years to come. So the rest of this is just like a tote bag, a magazine um, of the exposition. They have this at the um, Place Vendôme location. And then in here, I also have a little gift uh, from them for my birthday. It's a fragrance, uh, Rose Velour which is very nice of them. So here it is. I will be wearing it for the rest of this video. Okay, so I moved you a little bit closer for this video. I forgot that I actually did bring a stand with me. I just bring lighting because it's kind of dark. I have all the lights on. Couldn't do this during the daytime, um, but hopefully you can still see. So let's start off with, so we got the Van Cleef. I intend to wear it on this hand but I couldn't do it up myself on this hand. I can only do it on this hand, so I'll probably ask my husband to help me with that. But size-wise, I mean, I didn't do any alterations to the bracelet. Um, the salesperson suggested this is fine. Uh, if I feel I need to tighten it, I'll take it to my local um, Van Cleef uh, store and then they can probably do it for me. And I don't want to, I don't wanna have to touch it, but I think it's fine. I mean, you don't want it to be super tight either. Let's start off with, oh gosh, okay. Let's start off with Chanel, okay? I love, I was in my element for this entire trip because I love Chanel, as you guys know. Uh, there are many Chanel boutiques in Paris and especially where we are stay staying, there's like, I can count like five different Chanel's that I can walk to. Um, I didn't go to all of them, but you know, because I usually will shop um, there is the 31 Rue Cambon store. I've been there before. I've done the whole staircase thing and I had no desire of going there now. Um, the convenient thing about going to Paris now in November is because that's when the cruise collection launches. Unfortunately, it was post-price increase. 
unfortunately, but my birthday landed around the time that Cruise had launched, which was November 9th, and uh, so that meant that if Cruise has launched, that there's going to be plenty of new stock in boutiques. Although it didn't all trickle into boutiques right away, it, you know, it, Cruise, the 9th was a Tuesday, and uh, apparently they didn't receive everything in boutiques yet until the Friday. So Thursday, which was my birthday, Remembrance Day in Canada, Veterans Day in the U.S., and Armistice Day in, um, or Armistice? How do I say that? I think I'm saying it wrong, but anyway, it's the same holiday, but different countries call it different things. It was a bank holiday, so uh, the stores were open, but they weren't getting deliveries in. Anyway, um, I the first shell I've ever shopped at was at the Avenue Montaigne Boutique. There are two across the street. Uh, and so I have, I love that location because it doesn't get as crazy busy as Cambon or anywhere like uh, Rue Royale or Rue Faubourg, Rue Faubourg saint Honoré. that location is closed. Uh, I think they're doing some renovations and 19 Cambon opened to help relieve some of the stress on 31 Rue Cambon but it seems to just not help. There's just so many people there unless you go at opening time but anyway. Let's get into it. The reason why I love Paris is you can shop, and if you're staying in central Paris, they'll deliver your packages to your hotel, so you don't have to walk around with a bag, which is really nice. So they've wrapped it really nicely. Um, I forgot to tell them to give me a foldable box. Um, they packed it in a box, so once they assemble the box, you can't unassemble it, so we'll see. Beautiful fan folded tissue paper. Look at this, this is so nice. They don't always do this in Toronto. Seems to, seems to just be a Paris thing. And I've got my VAT documents in here. I'll get in to the details about the VAT process. There's a lot of like misleading information I find, but anyway. Ribbon's a little bit thinner than normal. That's interesting. Camellia is a nice uh, hard paper camellia. That's, we don't have this here. Actually, we do now, and a lot of people don't like it. Um, the receipt also uh, for the Paris boutiques has embossed logos, uh, embossed lettering, and uh, you know it's on that Chanel invoice. Um, the Canadian ones aren't embossed, but they have the Chanel letterhead and everything. In the U.S., you guys get the thermal paper, so it's interesting how from country to country it's different. So I didn't really, I did have something still on my wish list and if I found it I would get it. It's not exactly the combination that I want, but it's, it's good, I like it. Um, so here it is, more fan folded tissue paper, this is really nice. Okay. So I had this on my wish list, it's a bag that I always hated but I now have grown to love. It is a Chanel 19. This is a Chanel 19. Let's undo the sticker. And then I'll pack it back up so I can show customs. Because you're not supposed to use the items uh, if you're doing the VAT, right? And I'll get into that process. But this is the Chanel 19 bag in the what we call the small, but this is the medium size, uh, but we call it the small. So you can tell because there's two precise half triangles on the side and then one full triangle in the middle with the oversized quilting. Uh, the size up will have more than half a triangle on each side, so it's a little bit bigger. And um, this is in the black lambskin. They have stopped making goatskin. I do prefer goatskin. I love goatskin. Uh, I have my Chanel 19 wristlet and I love the goatskin. I've reviewed that before and that's what made me really fall in love with the bag because I like how the bag feels when I wear it. I like the user friendliness of the bag more than actually how the bag looks, if that makes sense. So I like the function of the bag. And the sales associate who I deal with, she agrees, like we're kind of on the same wavelength. She's like, yeah, I hated the bag when I saw it, but I love how versatile it is. So I, lo I love the functionality more than how it looks. And that's how I feel about this bag. So I have this in white and I was looking for a black bag because I find that this will be amazing 
in the winter. Um, you know, wearing a black coat, you know, you don't have to worry about color transfer. Um, it's, it's somewhat uh, more forgiving with weather and precipitation and such. Even though it is lambskin, it doesn't feel like lambskin on, say, a classic flap um, or a trendy CC, which is a little bit softer. This does have some sort of coating. Uh, it's a little bit thicker. I'm not sure what it is, but um, the lambskin is slightly more matte and more saturated in color than, say, goatskin. I prefer goatskin not because of scratching. They're smooth leathers. They're going to scratch. Okay, goatskin scratches. But lambskin, if anything, will buff out better than goat skin and this lamb skin is probably not going to be the same buttery soft lamb skin that you can buff out on classic flaps I mean this will scratch as well the reason why I preferred the goat skin is I felt that the goat skin was thicker and if it's thicker it'll add more structure to a somewhat floppy bag however I don't think that it's going to make a huge difference I think the difference is really sizing the bigger you go the sloucher it's going to get if you have the smaller size, you're not going to get as much slouching. I saw another woman in the boutique with a medium goat skin, same black, um, and hers was pretty slouchy. So I don't think that the goat skin does a whole lot, uh, but I think it's more of the size. If you don't like that sagging, then don't go with the big size because that's the whole look of the bag. Um, you can get it, I'm definitely going to get a, a base shaper and an organizer, uh, but I intend to use this casually. I really love holding it by the top handle. I like the back pocket, and I sound like every person that, you know, bought this bag, that, how they love it, and I didn't think that I would fall in love with it myself, but I do like it. It's like an exaggerated cartoon version of a classic flap that meets a boy bag and that's how I like it it just looks like an exaggerated look with like it's blown up quilting like it's got it's so um, gaudy that it's nice like that it's the intention of the bag okay it's not meant to look classic it's not meant to look prim it's supposed to look like a casual slouchy bag and if you think of the bag that way then you like it so this is how it looks on me you've seen me with the white I'm a cupcake <laughs> so this is where it falls on me um, now this season it did come and I have photos I post on my Instagram just like someone's knocking I don't know who it is anyway <laughs> uh, it's probably the other room which by the way I love this hotel um, I've probably mentioned it in the blog vlog and with like, a good tour of my room I I love this hotel so much. Um, okay, anyway, <laughs> the, uh, what was I going to say? So I have mod shots. Now for Cruise Collection, they did the Chanel 19, but in the reverse hardware. So wherever you see gold, they've done the silver. And wherever you see the silver and the ruthenium, they've done shiny gold and uh, matte antique gold. So I actually really liked that. I saw that afterwards. But then knowing me, I'm still going to want the classic version, but I do really like how that looks. So I'm happy to have this in my collection. I'm going to be using this a lot, especially in the fall winter. Um, it will be pretty nice even for travel too. So, but I'm not allowed to use it until I do the customs um, form and I'll, and I'll talk about that later. The nice thing that I love about Paris is that, especially after a new collection drops, even two weeks, three weeks after a new collection drops, they always have a lot more stock of classic styles. So there was one on display that looked very mangled because everybody's touching it, okay? Um, and I had asked, do you have a brand new piece? And they had two. So I could choose from two new pieces. Um, and that's what I love about it because there's a lot more variety and you could be a little bit more picky. It's not just like buying the last piece on the shelf that you usually will get. In Toronto, I probably would not find this in the small size unless there was like pre-sale because they get sold so quickly. Um, so I just, price-wise, there was no increase on this um, in Europe. The price is the same as... 20k which is the um white version that i got 20b or 20k uh it, it it worked out to be the same price as that so i don't think that the increase happened 
on this bag for Europe, especially especially after I calculated. So that's kind of the reason why I just went for it because I'm like, listen, it's not in goat skin, that's okay. Um, chances are if I do end up getting this bag maybe next season or the season after that, there's probably going to be an increase on it, so I might as well just get it now. Okay, so the next piece, it's in a pretty large bag because I asked for... When I remembered, I was like, I just want the boxes folded, like don't assemble them. So sometimes the boutiques haven't assembled the boxes with the tissue paper and everything inside. So if you ask them, please give me a flat box and I'll just, if you want to assemble it, you can at home. I don't need more boxes, but I'm going to take them anyway. But um, in here, so I've just got the flat boxes and in here I have a pair of shoes. Now, I'll just show you the flat boxes while I'm at it because then you can know... I think it's just good because it'll lay flat in your suitcase and then that way you can decide later if you want to keep the box. I don't I don't need more boxes because I have I have extra boxes just from you know when you I just have I have extra boxes I, I yeah I think I have a couple of extra boxes. So this is what they look like. This is how they come and then they usually will, I guess in their spare time, they'll like assemble them with the tissue paper and everything so it saves time with packaging. Uh, in Paris, uh, the boutiques are so busy because there's a lot of tourists that come in, of course, because I mean, who wouldn't want to shop in Paris, right, for their home brands. They, the sales associate is not the person who wraps up your bag usually. Um, there's usually somebody else who processes payment. Uh, and then the bag is wrapped by somebody else. So the sales associate will take it to the area where they're wrapped, and then they'll also give your passport and um, payment method to the person who is at the cash desk. So it saves time for the sales associate, whereas in, at least in Toronto, the sales associate is doing everything. So sometimes it, you know, it takes away from them dealing with other clients. So that's what this looks like. Um, and in here, I have a pair of shoes now. I was wearing the Sport Trail sneakers that I own throughout this entire trip. They are the most comfortable shoes ever that I, I even want to buy a backup, I'll be honest with you, because I wear them when it rains and it's fine, like the white doesn't get dirty or anything like that. So I thought I'd get like a white version and this is what they look like. Unfortunately, the price on these have gone up, I didn't realize, but then by the time I asked for them, it was kind of too late to say anything. So. But nonetheless, they are very comfortable shoes, and I wanted them in the white. These are these are white with a bit of a black touch. They're not like an all white pair. These come like this with the black laces, but they are so comfortable that you know I'm happy to have these as an alternate if I don't want all black. These will be great in the summer. Um, I'm usually a size 40 in their shoes, but in sneakers I'm a size 39 and a half. So and and even then they're a bit roomy. So some people say size a whole size down. For me, I sized half a size down because I've got wide feet and they're the comfiest sneakers ever. Does it compare to Nikes? Absolutely. Like a good pair of Nikes that you'll get for like a hundred bucks at the most, 200 bucks. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know much about like the collaborations and like the really, really high end Nikes, but I'm talking about like your regular Nikes, Adidas, uh, shoes, New Balance, that you'll get um, obviously they're the same and I think sometimes they're even made by the same factories uh, but if you want a bit of a flex um, or you know you want a Chanel look these are great these are highly recommend these so these are my second purchase that I got now they had a lot of stuff there's there was like seasonal items that they just like hot items that were just hanging around like they had minis they had clutches they had vanity mini vanity cases they just had a lot of stock out in the open and i'm not sure how it works in paris like i don't think maybe there is pre-sale i don't know but camellia is like a nice hard uh, paper camellia which is kind of nice so sometimes you get those so that goes in there so the next item for which i did not request a box i just requested a folded box uh, it's a classic item. So let's show you how it's wrapped, okay? So they just wrapped the bag in tissue paper, the box is flat, I've done the whole box thing, it's okay with me, um, and I requested it that way because 
I don't want to have to deal with like trying to stack boxes in my suitcase because this is just not going to fit. Okay. Um, so we'll just share with you. This is unfortunately something that I had to purchase after the price increase. Um, so it's something that I've always wanted, but never went for and I'm kicking myself because I had, I could have bought this like three years ago when it was like nearly two thirds of the price what it is now. So care card with the mitt inside, white dust bag. Okay. So this is a classic bag and this is what it looks like. So it's a size that I wasn't really, so much tissue paper, let's undo this. I'm a medium plastic flap girl. There was no medium left, or they never received it actually. So here we have a white plastic flap. I, the lighting is not the greatest in this room. It's not iridescent, but it's in the soft caviar with the um, micro pebbles. I don't have a caviar bag like this. I have classic caviar, which is with the bigger um, grain. So that would be found on beige Claire. It would be found on black. Uh, but this is the white. Now the white is standard um, all across the board. So it's blanc. It's standard, it's got the same color code, doesn't really change unless of course, I mean, leather is a natural material, so of course it'll take on color differently from leather to leather, but generally speaking, it's always going to be the same white, just like it's always gonna be the same black, right? But this is a white classic flap in the size small, and I always thought that I still like feel like I dwarf the small like it's people will think this is the mini on me um, I prefer the medium classic flap but after having I mean there's another bag that I've maybe I've revealed already or it's still yet to be posted it's a small size as well and I'm actually okay with the small I think that the, the strap length is the exact same as the medium classic flap I don't have that here to show you, so because obviously I didn't travel with that. But um, this uh, the strap is the same length. I can wear this crossbody just like the medium classic flap. I don't have much of a like upper body bust or anything like that, so I can get away with wearing it here. Okay, but if you're bigger up top, then that's it's not going to work, right? So, but. It's, uh, you know, it's white, it's in a small size, it's carefree, I've inspected the bag. The quality on this was better than the rest of the classic flaps that I saw in the seasonal colors. Um, so, I don't know, maybe maybe classic colors they make better. This uh, is a made in France piece, as most of the, I mean, pretty much all the smalls and mediums are the same. And this doesn't have the authenticity card, it has the little uh, plaque, which, was verified to me by a Paris sales associate that it is not a microchip, okay? It is just a plaque. So I don't know why people keep saying that's a microchip. It's not. It's not readable, okay? So this is a small classic flap, champagne gold hardware, soft caviar, or the micro caviar, seasonal caviar. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like on me as well in like the cutaway pictures. So I'm really happy to have this in my collection. Uh, I think unless there's some special classic flap with like a, you know, a tweed, uh, I don't think I need another color. Like I have all my basic colors, but then everybody says that, right? When one comes around. Uh, I'm actually kind of happy that I got the small because it's cheaper <laughs> than the medium. Not that much cheaper, but it's cheaper. So. I'm basically paying the old price of the medium for the small, um, but yeah, so I'm happy that I was able to get this. Now some of you might be wondering, wasn't there a one bag per passport rule, okay? 
And I asked this when I purchased my 19, and I was asking originally about this, if they had the white classic flap, the boutique did not receive any white classic flaps yet, and actually the sales associate said that we don't have them in this collection, and I'm like, but I'm pretty sure I saw in the leaked Instagram photos that there is a white classic flap in chevron and in quilted uh, leather, and she said she'll check, and she said it, we may be getting them on Friday, we don't know, we just don't have the stock yet. So that sales associate is wonderful. Um, she was away uh, for the rest of the week. And then I met another sales associate uh, on like a couple of days after I saw her and she said, we do have the small, it's the only one in all of France. Supposedly there was a medium at 31 Rue Cambon, but uh, it may have already been sold, but this was the only one left. And, um, and she advised that the small, will probably be good for me for variety because I told her what I have in my collection already and she's like okay you need a small and when I tried it on she said actually she likes the white and the small better on me and to be honest I don't when I do carry the medium classic flap I'm not really carrying so much um, so and it holds the same amount so it's great I'll show you a, a, a cutaway as well now I also noticed which has been a discussion uh, in the YouTube community, uh, something that was picked up and analyzed by Super Jacob on YouTube. This is the small size, and it does have that cross stitch. So, if you haven't watched his video on this, I suggest you should. There's speculation that these are not made in the same standard as the smalls before. So, the characteristic of the small, of how you can tell which one was the small was the quilting but at the end this diamond would not be completed it would just be open okay and the way that the leather panels are stitched if you look in the booklet that you get with oh and at this point I actually realized that they forgot to pack the booklet that you usually get with classic flat bags or reissue 2.55 bags and these are the booklets that have the history of the bag and the different images and then it also has the um, certificate that they put at the front of the booklet with your name and the serial number as well as the boutique stamp and I think they forgot this because I you know asked for non-standard packaging which is the folded box so they probably didn't use the pre-made boxes that all the classic flaps come with so they probably weren't prompted to put this in there so that was an easy fix because when I got back I uh, messaged the sales associate on whatsapp and uh, I just sent her a photo of the um, inside uh, plaque of the bag and then they made up the booklet and with the, with the certificate and all, and they mailed it back to me in Canada. I literally got it within a day. It was very fast. Classic flaps, you can see that the, the leather's pre-cut and then it's stitched in a specific pattern and then it's sewn together. It's not all stitched and then the leather is cut out, right? So there's speculation that they kind of took the lazy way out and stitched first and then cut out the piece instead of cutting out the piece first and then stitching meticulously after. So um, a lot of smalls are being made this way now. Uh, my other one that I got doesn't have that. It's made in a different way, but it's also a different leather. So, you know, perhaps just the way the construction is on that is different. But I noticed this and I was going to make a fuss about it. But um, I'm okay with it. The only thing is, is I still am, I mean, see the other one that I got in the gold um, is, it's a metallic leather, it's quite in your face, so that's why I was okay with getting a small because, you know, maybe a bigger size might be a little too much overkill because it's already a pretty gaudy bag. But for a classic flap, I still do prefer medium, so... Um, I did ask my sales associate, I said, hey, if I am able to find another medium, say in my home city, let's say, and I don't, I don't want the small, can I exchange it? And she said, yeah. And I've done that before, where I'm, I'm able to exchange something in a different country. So um, I don't see that being a big deal. I don't think, I'm okay with it, um, but 
It's just something to note if any of you guys are wondering when you get a small and then it doesn't look like the other smalls because there's a different stitch. Actually, you know what? That open edge used to bother me. It used to be something, because I'm very OCD, I like things to be, you know, complete. It used to, that's something that did bother me about the small, that it was an open diamond. Um, and the fact that they've just kind of completed it, I kind of like better, so... I, th I think it's fine. I mean, I'm happy with it, and uh, it's a color that I've always wanted. But yes, if I can find the medium, I would prefer the medium, just because I feel like that's a better size for my body. But this looks fine too, but I just I just prefer a medium. I don't know if I should have this as a clickbait thumbnail. <laughs> but it's not what you think. It's not a Birkin. Uh, this is not for me. These uh, Actually, there's nothing in here. Um, because my husband's wearing them. It's a pair of shoes. He wears Birkenstocks to Paris. Uh, <laughs> and he needed shoes, and so he bought a pair of shoes. Uh, so he's wearing them right now. I'd show them to you, but they're a pair of sneakers. I'll insert a clip here of what they look like. Another MS purchase is a very small one. This is an item that I was uh, eyeing. They don't have them in Toronto. I've asked and uh, it wasn't available online and it wasn't available in store. But it's a piece of jewelry. And um, this is what it looks like. This is the... authenticity certificate I think so I purchased this from the flagship boutique um, I was able to get in and uh, there's just basically a certificate that you know tells you what's in it this is nothing that is um, yeah there's like a serial number um, as uh, Cellier 24 Rue de Faubourg Saint Honoré this is the uh, uh, certificate here um, so I think Seems like it's important to have that. Um, this is what it looks like. It is a very uh, dainty piece and uh, something that I want for every day. So this is what it looks like. So that's what the any fine jewelry that you get. Fine jewelry doesn't have to be diamonds. Okay, fine jewelry doesn't have to be um, you know a lot of their uh, exotic type of pieces. Silver is considered fine jewelry, so if you want like a silver piece, um, that's also fine jewelry, right? So this is gold, um, but it's nothing, you know, super elaborate. So this has the uh, address on the of the boutique there, and it's just a very dainty band. So this is called the Ariane Wedding Band. Now. I don't need a wedding band, but I wanted to use this as a stacking ring. So this fits beautifully on my ring finger. And it's just something dainty. It's uh, 18 karat gold. It's not super yellow gold, but I did want uh, a special piece. Now, it's basically, it looks like two slim bands. And then there is... Um, a little bar that comes down so it looks like an H and then if you turn it this way so it comes down three times one two and then uh, three pardon my nail my my nail polish peeled off so but that's what it looks like and if I stack it on my finger that's what it looks like now I was thinking of getting one for my middle finger uh, well this one for my middle finger but then I like to wear this here and it just kind of clashed this is actually in pink gold so it's rose gold. Now, what I'm wearing right now, this is yellow gold. So you can sort of see there's a bit of a difference. But this isn't so pink, and they don't really have a lot of yellow gold. I don't think they have any yellow gold. They're, they're all kind of rose gold. At least this one. It comes in white gold, and it comes in rose gold, and then there's one with diamonds as well. And of course, if you add diamonds, it's going to really bring the price up. But it's just like a nice dainty yet modern piece and I really liked uh, this from them you know and I always advise buy something like if you're gonna shop at any of these boutiques buy what you like just don't buy stuff for the sake of buying so I was looking for this actively and they had it here so I was like you know what I might as well go for it and it did work out uh, price wise to be slightly cheaper than if I was to purchase in my home city so you know I might as well take advantage of that now the big question is 
appointments at Hermes and I'm gonna save that for another video uh, so we'll talk about that and I think that's important that we um, you know add these experiences online because a lot of what people advertise about Hermes appointments um, can be somewhat misleading to people and uh, I'll, I'll talk about that I'll talk about it and what my experience was and you know if we were successful or not successful and what came out of that appointment and I'll and I'll leave that for another video um, and uh, yeah we'll, we'll discuss that later but this is basically uh, so far what we've purchased from Hermes. The next item is from Fendi and I was actually you know hoping to get this item here in Europe or in France uh, because this is a hot item in well everywhere and there's a waitlist for it you have to pre-order it um, and so I thought I'd take you through it now. So I purchased this from the same department store as my Van Cleef bracelet, which is the Saint Maritain on Pont Neuf. And uh, this is by the, yeah, Pont Neuf uh, by Cheval Blanc and the uh, first arrondissement. And this is a fairly new department store. It's only three and a half months old. Uh, so it's gone through extensive renovations. There's a big history behind the building so definitely uh, if you want to take a look at what that department store looks like I've done some footage in there uh, from a vlog but anyway the nice thing about shopping at the store is compared to other department stores in Paris I'm not sure about Balmash but uh, Pontam and uh, Galerie Lafayette but Galerie Lafayette and Pontam are um, big department stores, they're very busy. Galerie Lafayette in particular, so busy with tourists. And when you're doing like your tax refund and everything, you gotta go to like a different section of the department store, which is like a very long lineup if it's busy. Um, whereas at Saint-Maritain, they do the tax refund in each department, so you don't have to go to a separate department to do that. I appreciate that because it saves a lot of time. There's also a rewards card. Uh, so if you purchase something, you sign up for the rewards, you get points, and then at certain concessions, you can redeem those points. Now, Fendi is a, is a department or concession where you can redeem those points. Places like Dior, uh, Louis Vuitton, or uh, Van Cleef, they won't take the points. They won't let you redeem them, but they'll give you points if you purchase anything. So I had points from this. So that equated to like 210, 217 euro, which is quite substantial. And um, this only comes in a dust bag. There's no box for this. And um, I did some mod shots in the vlog. And it's a Fendi first. So how neat is this? It's such a unique shape. Ever since I saw this, uh, when it, like before it blew up on Instagram, like I saw photos of it and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's such a beautiful shape. This is the medium size, it's not the small size, this is the largest. I just love how ergonomically friendly it is for me to hold. It's edgy, it's unique, um, it you know can be held as an oversized clutch. Uh, it's got like a kiss lock mechanism. It has like the Fendi uh, print all over the inside. You can attach a shoulder strap to it. Now the shoulder strap that comes with it is quite a generous shoulder strap that I really like. I tried this one originally in Las Vegas and they had only one there and I didn't go for it. But this one, you know, I had to get because I had the points and I could redeem them, so there was a saving there. Very generous shoulder strap. It's very comfortable to wear. I'll insert some mod shots of me trying it on, but it's just so easy and can go day to night very easily. And it's just something different. It's fully lamb leather, well, outside at least, and then inside it's uh, got the Fendi print. Um, interior as a generous interior there's no pockets but just I think this is going to be quite iconic like they're gonna they have beautiful colors out they have some exotics out 
This uh, was also featured in the Fendace um, collaboration in this like really beautiful gold embellished, like just really, really stunning. I think if I can find a picture, I'll put it in, but I always imagined it in black. I did like the other colors, but I think this will be such a great bag. And if you don't want a logo, you turn it around, right? And it's just, just really nice, right? So I think this will be a great addition for just something that is easy going. Now, it, there is a bit of weight to it um, because of the leather and also because of this bar, but it's not something that I'm not used to because Chanel bags can be quite heavy. I've heard criticisms that this gets scratched here. Now, any lambskin is going to get scratched. I've seen a battered version at Holt Renfrew in Toronto. There was one on display and it just looked like it was just nicked because everybody was probably like fondling it and holding it. Now, if I'm going to be using this, I'm going to obviously I'm going to be a lot more careful. Um, I don't have like dagger nails where I'm going to be scratching it like crazy, but um, I think it should be fine if I'm gonna if I'm the sole user of it and I'm not having other people randomly touching my bag. But beautiful, and I had a, quite a bit of a saving on it because I had the points to redeem. And now for some Dior. Okay, I wanted to share this. <laughs> I wanted to share this bag with you now because unfortunately I don't think I can keep the shopping bag but I wanted to appreciate the beautiful Christmas edition of this packaging. And it's all, it's just a beautiful um, print. I don't know, I, I wanna be able to take this with me. I don't think I'll be doing anything with it, to be honest. But um, again, I had this delivered to my hotel because I'm obviously not gonna walk around with this enormous bag. Um, has a little star on there. Definitely will be keeping that. But I think the outfit that I'm wearing is quite fitting for this unboxing. So there is some ready to wear. Uh, I've had this item on my list for a really long time and I thought to myself if I go to Paris this is definitely something I'm going to be buying here because it is cheaper. Uh, even without the tax deduction it was cheaper than buying it here than it is in my home country. Um, but thus far, so with Dior, uh, their pricing isn't completely harmonized globally. Uh, whereas brands such as Chanel and Fendi, they are, Van Cleef is as well. Uh, Louis Vuitton, I think it is similar, but I haven't purchased anything from them, so I can't really compare right now. But, um, so far I found that Fendi prices are the same if you work it out. Van Cleef is the same if you work it out. Chanel is the same if you work it out. But Dior does work out cheaper. So these are items that I had on my list. And uh, yeah, so the first I'm going to show you. This is ready to wear. So it comes in these garment bags. There are... Well, there's only one... No, there's two... There's only one garment bag. Interesting. Um, I should have received another one. I wasn't. I wasn't paying attention, but I can request another one. I don't think that should be an issue. These are due for alteration, so I will be able to alter them in Toronto. I didn't purchase the. Well, I did see this before, to be honest. Like I did see these like the first day I got here, and. Um, I didn't revisit the boutique at that time when I had asked. They said yes, they could do the alterations before I leave. But then I just there was just so much other stuff that we wanted to do. Like this trip wasn't just like shopping, okay? Like we wanted to do other things, um, and I didn't go back. And uh, so I did go on my last day, and I did call the flagship boutique in Toronto, and they said yes, of course, because this is a considered as part of their 30 Montaigne classic line. And they obviously they'll do the alterations for free. At least that's what I'm told so far. Um, and with uh, the sales associate was also saying that this is considered haute couture, but I don't think so because this is ready to wear. This is not haute couture, but maybe she was just trying to make me feel special. I don't know. <laughs> but it is a bar jacket. 
So it's in this plastic, which will be handy because I can pack it. Now, this is in the cream color. I'll have some uh, modeling shots from the change room. And depending on the lighting, it looks different. But this is actually cream, but it's not like a yellow cream. It has a hint of pink to it. And on my skin tone, I find that it's quite flattering. Sometimes, if you're, I don't know, some people say that the yellow undertone creams look nice on you. I don't know, I just end up looking like really dull. I don't like it. But this has a brightness to it. Now on camera here, it has a hint of pink. It's not, it isn't pink, it's, it's definitely cream, but it, it's, it's a beautiful color. So I, I preferred the double breasted. Um, the, generally speaking, I mean, you gotta try things on depending on your body type, but if you have a larger bust, it's recommended that you go for a single breast. Um, if, you're you're not so well endowed on top then a double breasted uh you know opening is more flattering supposedly so i tried on the single breasted blazer and it was okay but um got the double breasted i went up in size just because the arms got really tight on the size smaller so uh i went with the size 40 and all we've got to do here I want to show you the jacket first, but this is the jacket. And I'll try it on with this outfit because I think this is very doer. Um, all, all the alterations has to do, there's a center seam going up the back. So not at the hips, not down here because this is where I need the room. But up here, they just got to take it in here and it's going to automatically pull the shoulders in. So even without alterations, it looks good, but it definitely, I mean, I'm going to obviously have it altered because we all know what alterations do, right? Like they make things look a lot better. So I'm going to try this on with, with this outfit. So I don't have a mirror in front of me. Actually, no, I do. You can kind of see there. So originally I was wanting the black, but when I saw the white, I was like, you know what? I can't pass up the white. There's... You know, it, it works, just get it. Um, it's a classic item. So, as you can see, am I putting this on right? No. No, oh, I am, okay. So this is gonna go, I have to button this here. idea of it but I'll, I'll do alterations and I'll show you what it looks like because I think showing you a finished product will look nice I'm gonna tuck the label in here but this is the bar jacket and it is a classic shape I really like how the pockets are um, but yes I do have to have it taken in and I know this because when I've tried it on before um, I tried it on in Las Vegas a couple of years ago and uh, they had already suggested what they were going to do and they can alter everything down to a T as we know. But I just, I love this shade of cream. I think it's quite flattering and even with the skirt, like look how, look, look how nice it looks, right? So I'll show you the other one. So that one has a hint of blush to it. So it's a very, very beautiful cream, okay? And the second is basically the exact same blazer. I don't know why I didn't get two dust bags. Um, I should have. Even though I don't need it, like, I should have bought two dust bags. Um, or garment bags. But uh, now, come to think of it, I honestly, like, they didn't have the um, cream double-breasted in my size in the Saint Maritain uh, department store, and I should have purchased that, like, but they did have the black one. The sales associate, um, I had held this with her, so I, I bought it at the, not 30 Montaigne. 30 Montaigne is the flagship, but it's closed right now. They're opening, I think, in March or something, because they're doing some renos, I think. Uh, so they've moved over the boutique like a couple of shops down. So that is considered the flagship for now. But... This was available there, and if I had bought this there, I would have earned more points that I could have redeemed towards my Fendi bag, but we won't talk about that. I'm, I'm still 
kicking myself about that. And another purchase I could have purchased there and I would have got points. So stupid me. I should have I should have just, you know, but I didn't have time. Like I didn't I didn't have time and I just I wanted to pick this up and it was on my last day. So if I did, then I would have put it on hold and then gone there to check and then purchased it there and got the points. Um, and then I would have got a better deal on the Fendi bag. But this is the bar jacket in the black double-breasted design right here. And um, very beautiful, lightweight piece. You can definitely drape it over your shoulder. You can wear it daytime. You can wear it nighttime. You can wear it as like a top. And it's just a very comfortable blazer. And I know we'll get a lot of use out of it. So in here you probably have an idea of what this is. Because you probably saw a peek of what was I was opening. Everything now. I just realized that I didn't get a box for this, but it's okay. I'm not bothered by it because I don't really need a box. Um, it would be nice to have the box. I'll ask. I'll ask if they can provide me with one, uh, maybe in Toronto, but this is in the, the dust bag. I obviously don't have room for a box in my luggage, so. But I would have liked to have the Christmas box. So I'll ask. I'll ask if I can get one. But you can tell what this is. This is a book tote, okay? Now, I have always eyed this, but I never wanted to spend the money on it because it's a canvas bag. Um, and it's like, a, it's like a shopping tote. But because I was in Paris and the price is different, significantly less than Canada, I went for it. Okay, so purchasing this here made more sense. Otherwise, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy it in Canada. I'll be honest with you. So it was cheaper. And this is in the Trois de Jouy print. So I've always loved this. They had one that I was eyeing that was like an ombre version. So it's a mix of the gray and the navy, which was really cool, but I, I always wanted the navy. The oblique I also saw as well, and I do like the oblique, but I don't know, there's something special about the Trois de Jouy print. This was quite limited when it originally came out, like people were searching for this high and low, and now they've made it as part of, so far, as part of a permanent part of their collection, which I'm really happy that they've done. So this is, you know, when I look at it in person, it's like, it's embroidered. It's like, you can tell, like it's all very fine detail. The Toilet de print is a very classic print. So I just think it's fierce. Like you've got like, you know, tigers and bears and <laughs> lions and, you know, all like everything. All, like it, It's just a stunning bag. Now, I love, I appreciate the artistic vision behind this. Is it worth the money? Absolutely not. But I do like this as an art piece, just sitting there and me for me to admire. But I do want this as more of a functional sort of travel tote um, to just throw everything in. And I couldn't pass up getting this here because it was cheaper. Uh, and I do always, I did always like it, but I just didn't want to spend the money for it. So that's why I went for this. And um, there was a smaller size, but I can definitely pull off a bigger size. That's the whole point of the book tote. I'm going to see if I can get like a base shaper to put in here. Um, and I can carry. So this will be like a really great like airport bag. <laughs> I don't think I'll wear it uh, to the airport right now because here's another thing too you need to know. Um, so let's talk about Paris shopping. Uh, Experiences are different depending on what country you're coming from. So uh, a lot of the time, even with Chanel, uh, the people who really talk about Chanel being cheaper in Europe are people who are from the States, okay? So depending, and now that story might be different because of all the price increases that have been happening, but for a good stretch, for people who are citizens of the U.S. or residents of the U.S. who are shopping and coming back to the U.S., um, based on the currency, shopping in Paris was a lot cheaper, okay? Now, 
when you shop for luxury items in Europe, so that doesn't have to be Paris, it could be anywhere in France, anywhere in Italy, Portugal, any part of the European Union, not London anymore, they've they're, they've exited, uh, not like the UK, they've exited Brexit. So they, um, that's a different story now. They don't do the VAT apparently anymore and they don't do the um, duty-free shopping at the airport, which is unfortunate. But so the rest of Europe, when you purchase anything in Europe, you do not have sales tax. The, the sales tax is built into the price. So um, that's why, like, you know, U.S. and Canada, it's a little bit weird. We pay sales tax on top. So, for instance, um, in Ontario, I pay 13% on all goods and services. And whereas in Europe or places like uh, Australia, even India, I don't think there's an additional sales tax. Um, it's all built into the price. So uh, for people who are not residents of the European Union, you are exempted from paying that tax because you are not taking part in a lot of the services that that tax pays for. So because you're not benefiting from that tax money, you are being, you're rebated on that. So depending on the country you're in, the VAT may be 18%, maybe 20%. Um, I believe in France it's 18%, um, that, that's the VAT. So, when you shop for these goods, if you are not residing in the European Union, you have your passport at checkout, they'll usually bring this up because they have a lot of tourists anyway, so they'll usually ask you, are you doing a tax-free purchase? Please, you know, you, you provide your passport, you need to bring your original passport, and um, then you are, the sales associate will fill out a form with your passport details and your credit card information, and then you will get back a tax rebate of 13% on your credit card or 10% on in cash. So cash meaning that you go to the airport, you stand in line and you get your cash back. Uh, if it's on credit card, you have to wait like a, I think like two weeks to a month for it to process and then it gets automatically put back on your credit card. So you get a little bit more. So when you convert, let's say if I'm purchasing something in Europe and it's like 6,000 euros, let's say. Um, let's say for a Chanel bag, okay? If I convert that to Canadian currency, it's the same that I would pay in my home country with tax. So it's harmonized. Now, when you purchase something, you will get your tax refund. So I usually in the past will average it to 10% on a credit card because when you pay, you pay the higher currency conversion fee from, from your bank. And then when you're refunded, you're given like the lowest currency exchange. So I, like on average, I'll say you'll get back 10%, okay? We're not gonna nitpick over like five bucks here and there. On average, estimate that you're gonna be paying 90% of the price, you'll get 10% back, okay? But some people might have like a no-fee credit card and all that, but that's not everybody. So I just like to estimate the 10% that you're going to get 10% back on your credit card. Um, now, for items that have been made in Europe, uh, particularly France, um, you are not paying duties on these goods. So there is no duties, so customs, but you are paying sales tax when you across the border. So it works out to be pretty much the same if you are going to be shopping in Europe versus Canada. The reason why people like to shop in Paris is one, you're on vacation, okay? So you, what else are you going to do? <laughs> and you're surrounded by so many shops. There are so many boutiques. There's so much selection. Um, the experience is different because the boutiques are beautiful. There's, you know, you're served like coffee, macaron, you're served chocolates and the wrapping and all that. It's just a special and it's just the feeling of buying something in that home country. But anyway, I won't get into too many details because I think there's a lot of videos out there that talk about this, about the VAT refund, but I'm just going to give you my perspective as a Canadian shopper, okay? Uh, because a lot of these um, videos are done by people who live in other countries. Another fellow Canadian YouTuber, The Luxonomy, has done a very excellent video on this process and she talks about the Canadian-European, uh, the free trade agreement that we have. So for us, 
when we're importing anything, even if we're ordering anything, which I've done before from France, like for instance, when I was sent the earrings from, you know those big gold dangle earrings? I'll insert a photo. I, I was able to get those from Paris because they agreed to ship them to me, which was very unreal because they don't normally do that. But I didn't pay duties on that. I paid tax. So they sold it to me at the export price without the VAT and I had to pay sales tax, which is 13% in my province. There was no duties, maybe like a $10 brokerage fee, but that's it. If you order from Fashion File, if you order from Fashion File and it is something that is made in Europe, then you do not pay duties, but you pay sales tax because you're sold the export price. Um, if you order something from the US, so there are places or department stores in the US that will ship Chanel items to you, um, just make sure, are they going to sell it to you at the export price without tax? And second, uh, you know, if it's going to be sold to you at the export price, like you're not paying state tax, they're going to omit the tax and sell it to you, then you will still pay sales tax for Canada. So the point is, the price is pretty much the same, okay, once you start, once you pay your tax. It's just some brands, such as Dior, even after paying the tax, is cheaper uh, so that's when it's worth it but seeing as like for instance like for Chanel okay um, I it was it, the thing is is that you'll find pieces they're in the boutique like it's not like they're not pre-sold already you know like there's a lot more variety to choose from so you're gonna most likely land a piece that you like and plus you're on vacation anyway so you might as well I wouldn't specifically travel here to just shop okay because you are you're, you're gonna pay for the flight you're gonna pay for your hotel you're gonna be going out to eat okay so that's all cost okay so if you think that you know I'm just gonna go buy I'm gonna just travel because I want to buy a luxury handbag and it's gonna be cheaper well no because you're paying for travel costs you might as well buy in your home country um, but you know if you're on vacation anyway then it's a nice added bonus if you got something it's a nice uh, memory from your trip uh, so I wouldn't say that it is extremely cheap no it's not it's still expensive it's still expensive but you know certain brands you'll get a better price than if you were to shop in Canada I will Chanel is harmonized it works out to be the same um, and so is Fendi as I've mentioned before because I worked it out and uh, I think with Hermes because I was looking at some ready-to-wear pieces um, and it was slightly cheaper uh, so was the, like the jewelry, so that I don't think is harmonized. I've heard their quota bags are about the same price, so uh, you know it's just a matter of getting them right. What else? I apologize. I'm just I'm, I'm a little bit lost because I'm tired. It's 1 a.m. in the morning, and I got to still pack, so I'm just a bit spacey because I'm multitasking. What else do I want to cover? I just wanted to uh, show you the unboxing and show you some of the things I've got. Uh, when I go back, I will request a box for this because I do want even though I'm not going to use it, but, and I don't have space for boxes, but I think I, I still want to have the box for this, okay? Don't judge. <laughs> don't judge. I'm going to get the garment bag for the second bar jacket. I'm going to get those altered. Um, the classic flap that I got, now that I think about it, I'm going to ask if they do have a medium and I can exchange and pay the difference. Uh, I'm going to see if I can do that. What else? Um... That's pretty much it. I'll do a video on Hermes uh, in Paris uh, and offer a little bit of a different vantage point on this appointment system if, uh, if that helps anybody. And uh, yeah, generally speaking, our trip went really well. Uh, we got our COVID test results today. We're negative, so that's good. That's a whole load off my shoulders because I was paranoid the most, most of the time. Um, but overall, it was okay, so we're good. So we're all set to go back. I don't have a lot of luggage. I mean, I only have one suitcase. Um, and then I have my husband's suitcase, but my husband doesn't have much in there. So I think I have enough room to put everything in. Uh, I will not be taking the bags with me. I don't, I have enough bags uh, that I haven't thrown out. So I'll probably throw out some of the bags because I don't need them. I already have enough bags. Uh, what else? And that's pretty much it. So yeah, I'm gonna pack, wish me luck, and I'll update you on the customs uh, process, um, what I had to pay. But again, it's not duty, you have to pay tax. 
but I'll update you on, on how I handled that at the airport. So leaving here, what you do at the airport, um, there are forms. I'll just really quickly just go through. They explain it really well. It's very straightforward. You usually get an envelope. There's a form in here. There's a kiosk at the airport. Everybody's doing it, so you'll see people doing it. you got to scan the barcode on this. There's a light. If the light turns green, you don't have to do anything. The information's already submitted to customs and you'll get your tax refund. If the light is red, particularly when you have something of a large amount, so if you've got like multiple bags on one receipt, um, then most likely it'll turn red. You have to go to the customs desk. You've got to show your items to the customs officer because they need to see that you're actually exporting it out of the country and you're not leaving it here for somebody else. Uh, like a local to use and they get tax refund. you see what I mean so you got to show them physically um, it is said specifically that you can't be using the item but some people still do but you know it's that it's unused and it's new so you got to keep the packaging to some extent to show that you don't know, haven't really used it um, and then usually they'll check mark and they'll approve the form they'll stamp the form and that form then you do have to put into a mailbox that is right by that customs desk and then you wait for your customs refund. Nowadays there are apps, so Global Blue, Premier Tax Free. There is an app where you can um, follow or track your refund. Actually now uh, I realized with Global Blue they've been sending me emails with a tracking link there, so I don't have to do anything. So they're improving the system day by day. So that, you know it's been two years since I've been here, so or two summers since I've been here, so it's like there's going to be improvements which make it even more user friendly. Another, I put a pin on one thought earlier and I thought I'd just cover it, okay. Usually the rule is, with Chanel especially, that it is a one bag per, per, per passport and two small other goods per passport every 60 days. That's what I've been told. I did ask after I purchased my 19, because I was looking for the white classic flap, uh, if, you know, um, because I've done that before where I purchased multiple things and it was okay. Usually after a collection launches, and there's enough stock, they're okay with it. Especially if you've shopped at that boutique before and you have a profile there, they're okay with it. So the manager did approve me purchasing multiple things. Like they didn't make a big deal about it. But if it's nearing uh, the beginning of a launch, like they're, you know, they're already depleted of their stock and they're approaching, they're awaiting another launch and they're low in stock, then that may be different because they don't want somebody buying up all the stock. So uh, that's how that worked out. That's why I was able to buy multiple. I didn't put it on my husband's passport. And I, I just did it all on my passport. So it's a lot easier because I can track it. I'm usually the admin when this comes to this sort of stuff. Um, I don't really have my husband because then I have to ask him to track it. Like it's just, I'd rather just do it myself. So I prefer to just shop on my passport. Um, and that's pretty much it. So before I continue rambling, <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to pack. Wish me luck and we'll revisit this soon and if there's any other stuff that i want to share i'll put it in a different video i hope you guys enjoy this unboxing and uh i'm pretty spent this year it was a good birthday and i'll chat with you guys later bye so a little bonus unboxing what did i end up getting at the airport so uh if you haven't watched the Paris vlogs. I did show you guys a lot of eye candy around Paris, but then in my last part, part five, I did take you through some airport shopping. So at the Chat de Gaulle airport, there are a few terminals and a few gates that do have luxury boutiques and you can purchase things VAT free without processing the paperwork. So you just pay the price minus the VAT, which is wonderful. Um, I was very pressed for time. I was literally minutes away from, you know, boarding and the gates closing. But I did at the last moment ask for this item that was on my wish list. And I've been trying to look for this everywhere and I've never been able to find it. It is a piece that doesn't come in um, as frequently. And they did have it. I didn't ask for it to be wrapped because I had no time. I literally said, take my money 
just give me the item in the dust bag i don't need a box or a bag and so this is the unboxing and the inserts are from i think 2020 so they are outdated but i'm going to try to see if they ever do bring this item back if i can get the updated inserts but i think um, some of you guys have given me suggestions if you have suggestions for inserts or notebooks feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and thank you so much for watching